Okay, everybody. Hello. Come on in and come on in. You guys are starting up already. Welcome, welcome, welcome to another Wednesdays with Aisha and Maggie. I am Maggie and uh, I am not at home today. I'm actually not even in the U.S. today. I am actually in London, England. I came here for another cooking collab, but I am so, so grateful as always. Miss Aisha wanted to keep our collab going, so usually what we do is cook, but tonight you guys can sit back, relax, have a chow. We're going to have a chat ask us anything. Miss Aisha is going to be answering your questions and I'll be reading them out. So I'm going to bring her up. You all know her and you love her. Everybody say hi Aisha. <laughs> hi everyone. Hi Maggie. Hello. 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 <laughs> oh my goodness. It's good to see you. It's so good to see you too. <laughs> I miss our cooking collabs, but I, know. I yeah, I know you've been <laughs> cooking it up. So I see the questions coming in. You guys in the chat, you can type in your questions. Just put a Q in front of it. So I'll see that it's a question and we can engage you all in the chat. But yeah, so tonight, Miss Aisha, before we kick it off, anything you want to share uh, about uh, what's been happening with you this week or you want to get straight into the questions? <laughs> Nope, we can get straight into <laughs> All right, everybody. So we are going to put Miss Aisha on the hot seat. So oh, I'm going to read them and uh, <laughs> she's going to answer them. The first one that I see is from Charlene. Hello, Charlene. Charlene says, my biggest problem lately is getting my food seasoned well. What are some winners for any meat? Okay, well... As I always give you all homework, one of the things you can do is you can marinate your meat. By you marinating your meat for a day or two in the fridge, in those seasonings, it helps it to actually get down to the bone, honey, or, you know, get seasoned through your meat. So um, marination is what I would recommend. Um, there's something else you can do. It's, I can't think of it right now. Ah, what am I trying to say? Brine. <laughs> You can brine your meats as well. So both of those will help with the tenderizing as well as getting that flavor through your meat. I don't like to just cook my meat, you know, uh, and season it and then cook it. Like I like mine to marinate. It makes it way more flavorful. So... I love that. I love that. And I did a cooking collab this week while I'm in London with a young lady who is trying to step her a cooking game. And that was one of the things she would take the meat out, season it right oh. away and put it in the pan. So I love what you said about marinating. Yeah. And the reason why you all is that it allows, especially when you're using proteins, it allows that flavor to get down into, let's just say it, the muscle. And that way, mm -hmm. every bite has flavor all the way through, all the way Absolutely. through. Thank you so much for the support. All right. So I did see something in here. I'm going to answer. We have a question from Joel. Joel Brown says, you're not cooking tonight. Why not? Well, Joel, I am not at home. I'm in a little kitchenette. Uh, I'll <laughs> let you all see. I'm in a little kitchenette. So I got a little, a little pot and pan action, but uh, I actually am out of the country. And mm -hmm. uh, so I'm not at home in my usual environment, but I would not miss this opportunity. So that is why. And Aisha, Miss Aisha did say, when we started our Wednesday series that with Maggie, it could be cooking. Sometimes we could be talking. We may grocery shop. It could be anything, but we are here with you all. All right. So I see another question from Christina. Christina Gustav says, when I cook fish, what is the best cooking oil to make it brown and crispy? And what's the best seasoning bake? Oh, what's the best seasoning baked or grilled, which is better? That's a few questions, but have at it. Okay. So with the fish, um, it's probably going to be better to go with like a, a grapeseed oil for your oil. Um, and then as far as the seasoning, ba seasoning, bake or grilled, um, are you asking is baking or grilling better? And if you ask that, I would always say grilled, of course. And then, but on Friday, we're going to be making fish. So Christina, you can join that live and I'm going to show you how to make some fish in the pan. And it's going to be nice and crispy and we're going to cook it in the pan. Now I'm making catfish filet, but you're welcome to do this with any piece of fish that you choose. So try to plan to be there 6 p.m. Central Standard Time. And I'll show you how to get a nice crispy uh, piece of fish, uh, delicious, flavorful 
right in your pan if you can't grill it because grilled is the next best thing well grill is the best thing to me then the pan i don't really care for baked fish oh my goodness that sounds so good so now i have a question and i want to jump in on that one so you have a cooking class on friday is that for everyone or is that one of your uh, oh you have an open cooking class y'all so fridays yes i did a um not a survey, but I guess it was a survey. I asked the question, what would be the best day for my following um, to cook together? And it was Thursday or Friday. They were going kind of neck and neck. So Friday was the day that I chose. So on Fridays, I'm making myself available to cook together with my people, those that want to show up or just watch. A lot of the times people just like to watch, but you can always go go back and catch the replay. If it's something that you may not want that night, I get that. You can go back and you can walk through the live with me again. So on Fridays, 6 p.m. Central Standard Time. So. I love that. And I just wanted to jump in on this one. You all know Miss Aisha has been cooking for a long, long time. I'm still learning. One of the things she said with the grapeseed oil, there are different oils that are better for different purposes. Some of your, uh, for example, olive oils or some of the lighter oils are good for making dressings and dips. But mm -hmm. specifically the grapeseed oil, like she talked about, avocado oil, there are mm -hmm. some oils that have a high smoke point, which means if you're going to fry fish or anything at a high temperature. You don't want your kitchen to start, you know, calling the law. Right. Uh, so I have had to... <laughs> I've had to learn that some of the coconut <laughs> oils and other healthier oils that I've used, they're good for maybe a little stir fry, but not a pan fry. And the pan fry is in a shallow pan where you put mm -hmm. one side of the meat in and then you're going to turn it compared mm -hmm. to a deep fry where you submerge mm -hmm. it in the oil. So I know you right. guys are going to have a great time with that. I'll still be here across the pond, but I love to add my, uh, Two cents. Okay, we have a question from Cassandra. She says, what if you can't afford grapeseed oil? What else can you use? Now, honey, if you follow me, you know, I say use whatever you like. Like, that's always going to be my answer. So whatever you have, use that. Okay, it doesn't have to necessarily be that. Her, que her question was, what was the best oil that, in my opinion, and I say the grapeseed. I don't even have any grapeseed oil, honey. And y'all know I come on to my, listen, this is what I got and this is what I'm using. And we make it work. I make it work with whatever I got. <laughs> exactly. <So. laughs> exactly. On that one, I'll just add, if you're frying some of the vegetable oils, it's just regular vegetable or canola oil, mm -hmm. maybe a little bit more affordable. But like Miss Aisha says, use what you have, start where you are. All right, right. So we have a question from Joel. Joel says, what's the best way to cook salmon? Any tips on salmon? Now, salmon also, I like either grilled first. Or, and this is with fish across the board. Grilled fish is amazing. If you can just wrap some fish up in some foil, put you a little butter on there, honey, dr uh, squeeze you some fresh lemon. Okay, you don't even need nothing but butter and lemon, literally. Wrap it up in some foil and put it on the grill, especially redfish. Woo! It is the best, the best. So if you can't do that though, because everybody can't grill or know how to do that, then get you a pan. It's really easy and it does not take long. Most fish, hey, Keisha Key, that's my baby. Uh, most fish takes about three to four minutes per side if it's not really thick. So, I mean, and you don't want to cook it on a high heat. So these things are, you know, you could do this with any type of fish and you will come out with some amazing results. Lemon is your friend. Fresh lemon is your friend and butter when it comes to cooking fresh fish. So oh, just I love that. that. Lemon and butter, that would probably go with any seafood. If you can have shellfish, I'm thinking scallops, I'm thinking shrimp, I'm thinking uh, crab. One other thing I would add to that, you all know I'm a huge fan of the air fryer. When I'm in my kitchen, clearly I'm not at home. Um, but the air fryer, for anyone who doesn't know, it's a kitchen appliance, like a smaller tabletop oven that is actually an oven and a fan. So it blows the heat around the food. That's why it can cook faster and crispier. There are a lot of air fry recipes for salmon and you can actually get fish done really well um but i would just offer that if you you know sometimes people are intimidated by fish you don't have to be but no. the air fryer can be a foolproof way to cook it all right you guys keep Absolutely. the questions coming we got sabrina in here with a question how do you ladies feel about red snapper you just mentioned red fish what do you say miss aisha i love it i absolutely love it so that's how i feel about it 
I love it. And I especially, I especially love it grilled. Um, that is one fish, whether it's red snapper or another type of red fish, because they're all in the same family. They are so good on the grill. If you've never had it, I'm trying to tell you what I know. Mm. Mm, 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 mm. That is some different type of eating right there. It <laughs> is. It really is. When you try it, you'll see what I'm talking about. If it's cooked have... right, if it's cooked mm. right, and you got that butt on that honey, and you... <laughs> Squeeze that lemon, and then when you you know when you put your fish on your plate, you take some lemon again, and you just give it a little. Oh my goodness, I love it. So yes, yeah, so Miss Aisha says yes to snapper. Um, I have had snapper, but I agree a lot of the red fish that's a little bit more fishy, a little bit more oily. I'm thinking trout. I'm thinking salmon. I'm thinking mm-hmm. snapper. There's so mm-hmm. many. You all can experiment with them. You know, once you learn how to cook. One, they're pretty much the same. So like Miss Aisha would say, go with what you like. You know, I know in our African and Caribbean cultures, a lot of time they put the whole snapper like on the table. Mom used to have that next to the turkey at Thanksgiving. And I'm looking at the eyes and the eyes are looking at me. Y'all know I'm already traumatized. But uh, yes, yeah, so I did see a question. We see some comments in there. So Darvella said she had a question. Y'all, I'm trying to scroll. If I missed it, just retype it and put a Q in front of your question so we can get to it. I really Really appreciate the engagement. This is so much fun. Thank you so much, 10 Plus Sounds, for supporting. This y'all only post. chance to ask what you want to ask me now. Don't be. Uh-oh, I don't never, yeah. I'll never do Q&As. Never. Is there a reason why? why I'm Because I'm, I'm private. And oh, I keep yes, my ma'am. business to myself. <laughs> Absolutely. So keep the cooking questions coming. <laughs> it's so cook, here's cooking Ron. to Jesus. Don't ask me nothing else. No. <laughs> exactly. So Ron has another question. If you want to keep as a leftover, how long can you keep fish before it goes bad? And what would be the proper way to store it? Um, unless you're going to put it in the freezer, which you can, of course, uh, vacuum seal it. I wouldn't eat it after a day or so in the fridge. You know, I just, that's me personally. I don't know mm-hmm. how long it'll be good for, but I don't want to continue to smell it. Okay. Because <laughs> mm-hmm. seafood does have a smell. And I'm funny about food. I've been cooking uh, going on 30 years, believe it or not. I'm 40 years old. I've been cooking since I was nine. So I guess I have been cooking actually over 30 years. And to this day, myself or my family has not getting, gotten sick or the hundreds of people I've cooked, thousands of people I've cooked for. I can't even say hundreds anymore. I cook for thousands of people and no one has ever gotten sick. So I'm very big on um, how to prepare food, how to take care of food, you know, temperature control, all of that. And I don't play about stuff sitting in the fridge. So, um, I love yeah. that. And you all, uh, she is being humble. Thousands um, and thousands upon thousands. Miss Aisha, I just saw a post on her channel where she cooked for her church. I Over did. 200 people. I'll be cooking every Sunday. Y'all, I'm telling you, (laughs) you have a wealth of knowledge here. One thing I will add with that, Miss Aisha mentioned the smell. So Ron and anyone else, what I've learned, fish should actually smell like the ocean when it's raw. So when you buy fish, it should kind of have a little bit of that like cool, salty smell. If Mm -hmm. it smells fishy, it's already bad. So when you open a package of fish, it should smell like the ocean. All right. So next question comes from Brenda. Uh, So apparently, Miss Aisha, you showed your portal. Is this the Facebook portal? Can you tell? Yes, I did like a little test with it. I've had it for years, never used it. (laughs) It literally just has been sitting on my kitchen counter. So I did like a little test and I was like moving around the kitchen and it was following me around. So um, she asked me. Uh, oh, she said, I know you mentioned me. You asked me a question about, I think, where I got it or something like that. And I was just responding to you, Brenda, not sure why Facebook would not allow you to see the comment, but it was a gift. It was a gift that I got year, actually a couple of years back. Um, so I'm not sure I can find out where it was a uh, purchase. I'm sure like maybe Best Buy or something like that. But um, the thing about it is I wouldn't recommend it only because um, Facebook has taken features off of it that aren't beneficial, like if you want to use live. But it's good for like, it looks like a little tablet or kind of larger tablet. But it's um, it's used for like different things. Um, I have so many like little devices that I could talk to around my house, but um, you could play like Pandora. It's like stuff like that. You can um, surf the internet. Um, you can talk to it and do your um, Siri. Not, what is not Siri, girl? Siri is the Apple thing. What is it? What's the person you talk to? I know Alexa. there's a Google Alexa. Alexa. Mm-hmm. You can do your Alexa stuff. Um, 
this one controls the lighting and stuff. Let me see. What is that thing? What else does it do? You can connect your Facebook to it. Um, you can um, connect Bluetooth your phone to it. If you got iPhone, see your pictures and take pictures, record with it, stuff like that. So, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't recommend it now because they've removed uh, features from it that are no longer there. And when I looked it up, Facebook permanently removed it. So they're not even making them anymore. They're um, selling out whatever they have left and then they're done with it. So I guess it was a, uh, a test for them well. and then they found out it just didn't go as well. <laughs> Interesting. You I can remember. Google, just Google uh, Facebook or Meta portals and you'll see they're not making them anymore. So. You know what? I remember when we were all home with C-19 and they were coming up with ways for people <laughs> to still connect with family. I remember mm -hmm. they were promoting that big, but I guess it didn't take off. Nope. So we have a question from Darvella, and I don't know if you've already made one of these, Miss Aisha, but she says, can you do a salmon and rice recipe one day with a sauce? So you talked about lemon and butter. What kind of sauce would you do with salmon and rice? Well, it's going to depend on which kind of salmon, because when I was growing up, my aunt used to make uh, a salmon with rice, but it was the, it was the salmon, you know, the, the salmon that you, it's like crumbled up. It's like the meat is crumbled up and you cook it in a skillet and then you serve it over white rice. It's really, really good. So I don't know if she's referring to that salmon because I wouldn't put a sauce on that. Um, it's good all by itself. So unless we're talking about maybe salmon cakes, uh, I would have to know if it's a salmon cake or something, I'll probably do like a, um, probably a lemon butter dill or something like that, like a cream, like a cream type base sauce. So if we're talking about, I'm assuming we're talking about salmon cakes or yeah. maybe salmon sure. or maybe just regular salmon. Cause you can still do the lemon butter dill. I've actually made that before on live. I did a salmon. I cooked it in a skillet and honey used this lemon butter dill to put on top. It was so good. I don't know what I served it over. I don't remember. Oh, salad. I made a salad. It was really that good. That sounds incredible, incredible. Oh, fresh salmon on a salad. That sounds yummy. Speaking mm -hmm. of fish, we had another question. So Brenda, we got you. I think we got the portal one mm -hmm. covered and we how. Uh, all right. So Christina, when you make the crab cakes, do you use fresh crab meat or does it matter if it's fresh or imitation? Um, I would say it, it, it does matter, of course, because you got a, you got fresh and you got imitation. Um, I personally wouldn't do the imitation because you're not going to get that same taste that you would get from a fresh crab cake. It's nothing like a fresh crab cake, period. So it's the same thing. You know, you want real Louis Vuitton or the fake. I mean, it's, I mean, I'm just saying some people don't care. You know, I'm, I'm just being honest. Some people don't care. They may even look similar, but. The quality is definitely different. So um, a, a fresh crab cake with real crab meat is always going to be man and experience versus I, the imitation. I 100% agree. And you all look, you start where you are, you use what you have. But <laughs> to me, the best cooking is actually just simple, fresh ingredients. You really don't have to do a lot to it. And mm -hmm. we talk about, you know, whether it's vegetables or fruit, fresh is always best if you can get it. But you know what? Work your way up to that. But I agree. Nothing beats a fresh crab cake. Mm -hmm. All right. So I have this question here from Cassandra. What's a good way to cook grits? She loves that with her fish. And I know you've done some grits recipes. Aisha. I have multiple grits videos and I have uh, recipes. Uh, you know, I just show how to make them, but I'm going to tell you a secret to make some really good grits. Um, don't use water. Use chicken broth. I know. Just thank me later. Oop. Okay, so you all heard it from the source. Don't use water, use chicken broth. And you know what? My mom actually told me that same tip when cooking rice. So huh. you can cook rice in water, but if yep. you're going to make a savory rice, you just get a little bit of that. And the other tip, when the boys were little, mom taught me how to make their baby food. And what uh -huh. we would do is we would take vegetables and then we would cook them down in chicken broth. So imagine your green mm -hmm. beans or broccoli. So when you yes. puree them up or soften them, up the babies kind of get the flavor they get the vegetable but they get that savory flavor of kind of a meat as they're getting their teeth and getting ready uh -huh. to eat so all kind of stuff you can do all right so we got a question from Deanna she says how can I ensure that chicken and waffles remain fresh hot crispy and beyond when serving brunch for a large crowd this is a good one 
when you're cooking it's a, a good lot. one but honestly there is no way to ensure that and i'm gonna tell you why <laughs> you would have to be making it as like making it fresh that's the only way you can you can ensure that so unless you're cooking on the spot you're not going to have fresh crispy you know chicken and waffles i'm gonna just be honest so um i even with me cooking for my church now i used to cook for my church a while back like i have experience with cooking for two to three hundred people every sunday like i have experience with that so it's, it's that's not hard for me but when it's things like that you want to make like i made fried chicken i made a whole lot of stuff this past sunday but one of the things that i cooked was fried chicken and i knew that it wasn't going to be fresh and crispy by the time i got it there and people were eating so but at the same time the flavor was still there it's still good so people who know good food they know when they taste it, it's like, oh, if I would have had this right out the grease. So, I mean, unless you're making something right there on the spot, you know, it's it's and people get it. People understand. So that's what you got to understand, too. They know they know if it's being catered or things like that. They have an understanding that, hey, you know, it's not going to be the way it would be if it was being made right there. Like if you're at a restaurant or something like that. So um, just keep that in mind. Don't let it stress you out. Just make sure you do everything you can do to make sure it's good and you won't have no complaints, honey. Okay. Absolutely. Because at the end of the day, people love to eat. I will also yes. offer a tip. So the collab that I'm here in London doing, I helped a young lady who's trying to learn how to cook so she can be wife ready. And she said she wanted to learn how to make French toast. And so she was oh. cooking for uh, her crew. She's got a big YouTube channel. And one of the things that I had her do was to turn her oven on low, like all okay. the way down to 200, mm -hmm. get a baking, uh, baking sheet or any kind of oven mm -hmm. uh, safe pan. As she was making batches of French toast, we moved them into the Ormond kind of oven like a warming station. Yeah. So that was a way, it's like Miss Aisha said, it's not the same as coming right off the skillet, you all nope. know. But at least, especially when you're learning how to cook, excuse me, <clears throat> and you have to cook multiple things, that mm -hmm. was something that I struggled. Like, how do you get everything ready at the same time? Mm -hmm. So she learned how to make French toast in a skillet. She wanted to learn how to poach eggs and fry bacon. Mm. So using the oven. She did a great job. And you know, she's 20 something. So I'm really proud of her using the oven as a warming station. Maybe the next best thing to having it hot off the Oh, yeah, grill. absolutely. absolutely. <laughs> we have Sunshine in with a question. Beautiful name. Question. Baked or grilled is healthier than fried, right? Absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. And grilled to me is the best. I love grilled and then baked, you know, um, I, fried for me, I used to eat fried food so much, but now it's like, it's a treat, you know, to be able to get some fried chicken, you know, and it's something that you just have to train yourself and, and discipline yourself that, you know, this is going to be my treat this week. I'm going to have me a piece of fried chicken, but then, you know, you're watching that, you know, throughout the week. So, but definitely grilled and baked are healthier than fried. Absolutely. And, you know, several of us are on a health and wellness journey. I know Miss Aisha is doing a health um, low carb challenge and she does challenges year round. One of the things that I've had to learn, you all, is that we crave what we eat. So mm -hmm. it's hard to kind of break that habit if you're, it could be drinking sodas every day, it could be eating yep. fried food every day. So you go through that kind of painful withdrawal period. For me, it was sugar, right? I love mm -hmm. sweets. So your body's going to, you know, have its little fit about it. But once you get past that, believe it or not, you don't crave it as much and That's you right. can have it sparingly and enjoy it. Or you might find that you don't even enjoy it as That's much as right. you think. So we have a question from Joel. Joel says, that night you had a cookout. How did your steak turn out? And I remember <laughs> you had to go to the store. How did it end up? Joel, it was so good. Are you serious? <laughs> they turned out amazing. They really did. Um, I didn't even plan to cook the steaks all the way through. So I was able to get them well done and they were still like tender. So, But we did tenderize them with the baking soda. So it was really, really good tasty i ate the chicken the chicken was so good y'all the mm. flavor was on point just hey I have, i'm gonna have to bring my kids on sometime or let y'all see them eat because they are the ones like i cook for them most of the time you know so it's like they be tearing it up alana be running around the kitchen <laughs> <laughs> I love it. That's how kids show that it is good. They will dance it around. Bella be just doing her little thing, jumping around. And so, mm -hmm. you know, it's good. Like I, I said, I've, I've fed thousands of people. I, I promise you, like. 
Can just you try a recipe. Oh my goodness. You know. <laughs> so this one is near and dear to me as a Southern girl. Pamela's asking, what is the best way to fry chicken gizzards? So what do you say? So what I like to do when I make my uh, chicken gizzards, I like to boil them the day before. So I boil them and get them nice and tender and flavorful. You make sure you add that flavor, honey. Let them cool, set them in the fridge. The next day, you take your cold gizzards, you batter them, and you flour them up. Well, you know what I'm trying to say. Batter them up, deep fry them, honey, for just a couple of minutes. Let them get brown. Now you got a nice, crispy, tender gizzard. Oh, my goodness. I know. Tell me you're Southern without telling me you're Southern. Bring on the chicken and the chicken livers and oh, my goodness. And the chicken feet and the cow tongue and the oxtail and the uh, <laughs> raccoon. I eat it all. Not the raccoon. Turtle, rabbit. You name it, I'll eat it. <laughs> you name it. I would eat horse if they would sell it. Oh my we God. just ain't sold it yet. Let us run out of animals. I bet you they'll have horse on the market. <laughs> so my horse back. What am I going to do with this? <laughs> just come to my page. When the food run out and the animals run out, just come to my page and I'm going to show you how to make horse back. Okay. <laughs> I don't even know. Horse stomach. We're going to make it all, honey. We're going to survive. I'm going to show you how to survive. Now, if you're okay. picky, don't come over here. <laughs> Next. Because I ain't picky. I'm going to survive, though. I'm going to make it. While you over Next. there getting skinny and, and disappearing <laughs> and starving, we're going to be over here eating horseback. Oh, my gosh. Next on Outdoor Adventures with Aisha. <laughs> they love it. They hey, love I know it. how to fish. I know how to do it all. I know how to help you survive. Oh That's what gosh. it is, survival. All right. So when the apocalypse comes, we all go to Alabama. Yeah, I better come on. They- Oh my goodness. I got a crawl space and everything. It's big enough for everybody. Y'all come on. (laughs) We're going to climb down there. It's all cement. I go out hunting for us and I know how to start fires. I know how to do everything. Stand by for the horseback (laughs) recipes. Like to me, horseback is riding horseback. That's right. And it's going to be good too. Y'all ain't going to know it's horseback. You're going to be eating it like it's chicken. What is this? Smothered horseback over rice. (laughs) Oh my God. With onions and peppers. Well, if there's a gravy on it, do you really know? That's right. Look, Linda said, trust she is serious. And I sure am. If you know me, you know I'm serious. I am not playing. Oh my gosh. No, this is not a joke. It may be funny, sound funny, but I'm serious. Yes, ma'am. Okay, (laughs) moving right along. We have a question from Charlene. She says, please speak on baking powder as a tenderizer. I think she means baking soda, unless I missed something. Baking soda. What was yeah. it? Okay. Please speak on baking soda. So the baking soda, you you just rub it on your meat. Now, you could do two things. You can take a little bit of baking soda, a couple of tablespoons, and put it in some water and put your meat in there, submerge it in there. But you don't want to leave it in there longer than 15 minutes because it's and literally you can feel the difference. If you feel the texture like of a steak, of course, some some steaks you spend enough money, it's going to be tender anyway. But there are some steaks that they don't come real tender. So when you touch it, it's kind of firm. But when you submerge it or rub some uh, baking soda on it, like I said, after about 15 minutes, rinse it off, you can actually feel the softness of your meat. It actually softens it up. So it actually tenderizes it. And you can use it on different meats, not just steak. Um, It's just a tenderizer altogether. I don't know all the scientific facts of it, but if you try it, you'll see what I'm talking about. Wow. Or you can Google it. You can find out that way. That is fascinating. You you answered the question I was just about to ask. Could you use it on another protein like a pork chop? So yes, it sounds like you could go ahead and soften it. And I'm sure something about, you know how when we put salt on tomato or eggplant or watermelon, Mm -hmm. how it draws out the moisture? I'm Mm -hmm. sure there's some kind of reaction going on. Yeah, it's something like that, but I'm not a chemist, so I don't even try to figure it out. I just know how, how to make it work. How to make it work. All right, you guys, you got 30 minutes left with Miss Aisha. Keep them coming. So Marie Marie says, I'm cleaning out my fridge. What are your top whole food and top sugar-free, dairy-free, gluten-free items to restart a healthy routine? So Miss Aisha. Oh, I'm taking this one. Hey, I'm not sugar-free, gluten-free, or dairy-free. Oh, my goodness. This Um, is for you. All right, so I'll answer this one. And, you know, my 
Maggie, the substitute teacher, for anyone who doesn't know, I've been on a health and wellness journey where I use sugar substitutes, dairy substitutes, and gluten substitutes. So I'll give you five things that are always in my fridge. For dairy-free, I really like plant-based or goat milk butter. Uh, I like cooking with butter. I think it gives you like a flavor, a browning on the pancakes. It just, you know how butter kind of goes from solid to liquid to foaming, and you just get that nice flavor. So I always have butter on hand, one of those two. Uh, for sugar-free, pick your I don't want to say pick your poison, but what I should have are the natural ones. So something with stevia or monk fruit, those come from the mm. earth. You can use, you know, Splenda and Equal. I know people have different uh, preferences, but those are laboratory made. Um, but I always, I like sweet. So just because I'm sugar free doesn't mean I eat sweet, but I find sugars that don't spike the blood sugar. Um, so I always have those on hand. So we talked about dairy free and then gluten free. I mean, when you think of gluten, gluten, you think of grain. So if you've ever seen like that chewy pull apart bread, that stretchy material, that protein, that's what gluten is. So I have to use like rice products. So either rice cakes or rice crackers. Um, I will find um, other substitutes for grains, but I'm going to be honest with you. If you are a carboholic and we all know we love, you know, bread, that is one of the things like when we circle back to what Aisha (laughs) said, you're just going to have to push through. And, you know, there are certain things that you can do, cauliflower crust, you know, pizzas or whatnot. But it's one of those things that you almost have to detox from a little bit. But that would be me uh, as far as a restart. So, Miss Aisha, anytime you do a challenge or anything, do you do any type of like kickstarts or cleanses or anything to get you in um, like a weight loss mode? Um, Sometimes I'll use fasting like the first couple of days. I'll just do water only. But the good thing about um, my weight loss group and just all the challenges we've done, if you've been a part of it the past five years, you know what I'm talking about. We've been so consistent that it helps to break those habits. Like like you were saying, there are some things when you find yourself not eating them, like you won't even even desire them anymore. There's nothing that I actually crave like that. Like I may have a taste for something, but I used to be so bad and driven by my taste. Like one of the big ones. And if people who know me, they know I used to eat blue crab every week. Every weekend I had to have blue crab. And even if it wasn't a weekend, it could be during the week. It didn't matter every week. So when I was and coffee, coffee was one. And so but when we do these challenges, we are challenged (laughs) to, you know, push back from those things or to not have those things. So now, like, I don't really drink. Claire couldn't believe it. She's one of my closest friends, been knowing her almost 20, over 20 years. She couldn't believe when I told her that I haven't had coffee in a couple of days. She said, oh, my God, like she was just because I would drink coffee all day. I was a coffee drinker, you know, but it comes from doing these challenges over and over again. And it breaks all of that stuff. So there's nothing you have to have, you know, or you're not having those cravings and and things like that. So that's why they're helpful, too. That's why it's called uh, weight loss and lifestyle change. It's helping you to make a lifestyle change that um, helps you to be able to live healthier and be more disciplined um, with your eating and things like that. Absolutely. So you all please check it out. Miss Aisha has a free Facebook group called uh, Weight Loss and Lifestyle Changes. Just like she said, you just have to abide by the group rules. I'm in the group. It's helped me. And that's where uh, I'm always sharing and everybody is kind of sharing things to motivate you and help you on your journey. So we have a question from Lauren. She says, what are the staples you should keep in your pantry at all times as a cook? All right, Miss Aisha. Oh, honey, let me tell you. So rice, beans, and I'm talking about dry beans. Um, What else? Those are main, the main two. And I'm going to tell you why. If anything ever happened, you'll never go hungry. And they're very inexpensive. So I'm always thinking like that. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm like, what can I, what can I cook that it can stretch? You know how many beans, you know how long beans can last you and they fill you up. Honey, add a little rice. You good to go. I'm just being honest. So those are two things I keep rice and dry beans. And I love navy beans. I don't eat them often. But Mm -hmm. hey, if anything ever were to happen, I can throw on a big pot of beans and rice and probably feed this whole neighborhood next to my house. You know what? That is so true. When we think about other countries that may be poorer countries, if you look at their food, it's usually some type of rice. um, 
Rice and beans oh. dish. When I went to Costa Rica, absolutely, almost every meal there was a rice and bean. And if you think about it, when we used to have to go, whether it was like, Sorry, I don't know. No, you're fine. Take your time. Hunt for your food or, you know, people who had to travel long distances or a long way away, they would usually have a heavy starch meal because it would hold them as they were doing their journey. So the problem is, fast forward to now, where we drive everywhere, where we have delivery services, we our body doesn't need that kind of food to sustain us for long journeys like it used to. But to Miss Aisha's point, if there's ever an apocalypse, rice and beans, that's that's a great idea. And oh, we don't know goodness. what's gonna happen. That's the thing. Things change so suddenly nowadays to where we just have to stay prepared, not go buy up all the food in the store, but just be prepared in the event of an emergency or something happens or I mean, we just never know. <laughs> You're absolutely right. If we learned anything from C-19, shells can go bare pretty quickly. Yeah. So, absolutely. So Cortez is saying, hello, ladies. I thought they sold horse ribs. I am not aware. But if they do, somebody let Aisha know a recipe is coming your way. I Jeez. sure will. <laughs> I can make a whole cookbook on horse. A horse is huge. Oh, my God. I'm not we ready. Can do a ho horse ribs, horse back. <laughs> Horse breast, horse <laughs> horse buttocks, horse legs, horse tail. Oh, wait, we can't eat the horse tail. Well, maybe it is something under that, all that hair, like an oxtail. Horse nose, horse feet. I mean, we can eat it on another animal. Why can't we eat it on a horse? <laughs> horse thigh. <You> know <laughs> oh, my gosh, y'all. I'm sorry. I hey, I didn't can't care with it. Horse neck. <laughs> you laughing, but then you taste my. Like, mm, mm, this is good. That grilled horse. That's so good. I can't. That's I all can't. right. You just wait. Okay. The time is coming. The time is coming because Jeannie was. The time may be here. Somebody said horse ribs. I might have to go in, in one of these uh, back stores and see what's what's happening. Oh my gosh! Because they probably do have some. Yes, oh. I really eat raccoon. <laughs> I told y'all when you yes. catch the raccoon, <laughs> they be like this Us again. So you go ahead and skin that baby up. Oh my god, I can't. No, you skin them up for real. You can cut them up or you can cook them whole. It's easy just to go ahead and cook them whole, but make sure you skin them. And then if it freaks you out, just cut his hands and his head off, you know. But that's meat. That's all meat. Okay. I mean, you clean I, out the inside. I mean, it's, it's the same as any animal. I don't see why it's such a problem. Yes, we eat, we eat cow. That we, is, you know, true. why is that? You know, why oh. is it okay to eat cow and not raccoon or squirrel? <laughs> okay. Um, wow. I, I I got nothing, y'all. I I I haven't I haven't ventured that far <laughs> out. Never say never. Tanya. Um, <laughs> What you see what Tanya say? said? No. She said, I'm almost sure someone is eating horse meat. I agree. Thank you, Tanya. High five, girl. High they, five, they acting yeah. hostility today. We eat everything over here. And we don't judge what other people eat. All we I'm don't saying, judge. I have never had it, but, you know, to, hey, you never say never. Whew, sorry about that, y'all. Okay, so Brenda is asking. We got 20 minutes left, everyone. Brenda says, I am trying to completely get rid of carbs like potatoes and rice. Those things make me feel bloated and sick. Mm -hmm. What can I replace? This is for Maggie. Well, what I eat, and I'm not a doctor, but you all know that I pretty much eat lean protein. I eat very little starch, um, mm -hmm. select veggies and fruits, especially the ones that are like lower in sugar, like berries and apples uh -huh. and citrus. Um, and I try to avoid sugar. I will have a sugar sugar substitute, but I feel the same way. I'm going to be honest with you guys traveling. And, you know, when I travel, I enjoy myself today. I went out. Um, if you all will see later posted on my page, I had um, since I'm in Lung London, high tea. So I got the little scones and all that stuff. You know, just imagine a little tea party. But when I eat that way, I do. And I see it. I feel it in my joints. I'm a little bit stiffer. My mm -hmm. ankles swell up a little bit. So what you can do if you've had like a carb uh, celebration, 
lots of water. We should be drinking water anyway, but what Mm -hmm. I do is lots of water to kind of help flush it out. Any light exercise that you can do, walking, I do the Peloton. The reason why is because when that stuff breaks down to sugar, when you exercise, your body kind of gets rid of that first. And then Mm -hmm. lastly, kind of double up on the protein because that kind of curbs that craving. You know how you go down the rabbit hole of I want more and more and more. So that's what I do. Just sharing. All and the right. thing about, let me add to that, uh, Maggie. Yes, ma'am. Um, a lot of the carbs that we're saying we want to get rid of, it's not that it's anything wrong with wanting to do that, but all of the things that we eat, we need actually a little bit of everything. So it's all about moderation. Now you can eat what you want, but it's okay to have a little rice unless unless really you can't have it health wise. But it's really about the moderation. And that's one of the things I teach in my group. You just have to you have to discipline yourself that really a fourth, a fourth to a half cup of rice is really enough. It really is. Now I'm saying that because I love rice. I'm a rice head. Okay. I eat rice, baked rice, fried rice, white rice. I don't like brown rice. Okay. Uh, chicken and rice, you know, <laughs> rice and broccoli casserole, you know, rice stuffed in the chicken, rice stuffed in the corn machine. Like I love rice. I just love rice. Um, but I had to discipline myself that like when you go to the Chinese place, a half order of fried rice is too much rice. It's too much. That's why you feel a certain way. And I think anybody would probably agree if they eat a, a large sum of, of carbs like that, you're going to feel some type of way. You know, so we just have to discipline ourselves and really say, you know what, I'm just going to have this amount and that's it. And go like like Maggie said, up the protein and your vegetables and have that small portion of your rice or your potatoes or your pasta. It's so necessary. You know, it really is. Absolutely. And then you won't feel the way that, you know, you won't feel like that. But we, what do we do? It's so good that we go overboard. And I know because I'm I'm like that too. Some people love French fries. Woo! And then you feel some type of way after them. Uh, uh, now you're feeling all horrible. Or mm-hmm. the breads or whatever it is. If, when, anytime we go overboard with that stuff, man, we're going to feel some type of way. So you're not alone. Absolutely. No, you're not <laughs> alone. We all discipline. struggle. And you'll find ways that you can um, eat in moderation. For example, I used to be one of those people go to a restaurant that serves bread. I know Miss Aisha doesn't go out, but I would eat that whole bread basket. And then by the time the real food comes, I'm full. (laughs) So I may limit myself to just one or two, just to get that taste of it. It's great. And then stop there. But it doesn't, it definitely takes discipline. And that's why the weight loss group is helpful. We have a comment from Lou Casey saying she is absolutely right. Third world countries use every part of whatever animal is available. We're so blessed here. We're so blessed and we're so privileged and we don't realize it because we're not. And I've been to third world countries like Jamaica. I've been over there where you see people living at a certain, you know what I mean? Y'all, that's a whole nother life for another day. All right. So we have a non-cooking question. You can either answer or tell me to pass and I'll move on. But Ben says, I'm watching your show and it is super. Would you ever shave your head to do something bold and different? And what do you think about shaved heads in general? Okay. Well, I wouldn't shave my head at all. Um, however, I am bold and different without shaving my head. So, um, I have no thoughts about any shaved head. I don't even think about it. (laughs) Period. I love it. Period. Brenda says there is no, period. There is no (laughs) meat on a horse's foot. Y'all, I have never looked at that, uh, animal that closely. Well, that's okay. We'll figure it out. (laughs) Oh my goodness. We'll figure out how to eat that hoof. You never know. We may crack it open and it's like a coconut. It got a whole gold mine on it. Oh, How yeah. would you know? <laughs> huh? How you know, honey? What you what you ain't telling us? You know what's in a, a horse foot? Oh my god, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Okay, y'all, we got 15 minutes. I don't think I'm It may be it. like some peanuts, horse food. You may have to you may have to roast it for a little while and and, and soften it up. We may have to put some of that bacon soda on them hooves. Throw them on the grill. Oh my God. I'm sorry. We will figure it out. We will figure it out. Erica says, Y'all don't know about Aisha Child. (laughs) She's not new to this. She's true to this. I sure am. Okay. Y'all are gonna see. I'm gonna take y'all on some of these adventures. If you've been following me, I used to show my fishing and everything. I used to go fishing all the time. 
every oh day. I would go fishing sometimes twice a day. Oh Love fishing. Look, I would catch them fish, honey, and I would take them home and I would clean them myself and I would fry them up in the pan. And it ain't nothing like eating the fish that you caught. Woo! Okay, well, I can't relate. We're coming to fish in a minute, but Pamela says in California they sell buffalo meat. Now I will say I eat buffalo one. meat. Yes, there oh is no, a... I'm thinking about buffalo fish. My bad. Okay, there's now, a there's never... buffalo fish. I've never heard of Buffalo Fish. However, mm -hmm. there is a restaurant you all may have heard of, Ted's Montana Grill. It's from, mm -hmm. it's a Ted Turner restaurant, but I think, is it Buffalo or Bison? I can't remember, but they sell Ooh. like a, a, a different burger, but it's like a leaner uh, than beef meat, bison. very flavor. Mm -hmm. It's a Bison I know burger. it's expensive, child. Have it you is... seen a Bison? He look Not expensive. A... <laughs> no, I don't. They I've all never... like with the hunchback. That, that, that look expensive. <gasps> I'm just saying. I've never seen one, no ma'am. Girl, look, never... look up a bison. I'm telling you, they look expensive. Let me see. Okay, you let think me think I'm playing. I don't think you're playing. That's why my eyes are watering. Girl, uh... listen. That bison got that look. Bison got that back. You gonna pay, honey. Okay. Look at that bison. That's a bison. <laughs> it just look expensive. For oh, God. Uh, the other thing I, I wanted to offer, <laughs> no, you're not. The other thing I wanted to offer Pamela about the buffalo meat. I can't hear you, Maggie. Did you oh. mute yourself? Okay. Oh, can't hear you now. I muted myself because oh. I'm over okay. here choking. Sorry, so <laughs> Pamela. <laughs> I wanted to speak to the buffalo. Uh, when I say I'm dairy free, you all, for me, that is cow dairy. So I'm mm -hmm. sensitive to there's a certain protein in cow's milk that my body doesn't tolerate. But that's why I can have goat's milk, sheep's milk. And mm -hmm. I can have buffalo uh, mozzarella. You can find if you like the fresh mozzarella, mm -hmm. like the one that's the, the soft one that you slice in like a caprese salad. Or if you've seen the Italian pizza with the big lumps of soft white cheese, mm -hmm. that kind of creamy cheese, buffalo mozzarella is an option as well and i have seen oh, that wow. like at whole foods or sprouts so i did want to share that victoria is dying laughing money bass we got a real fisherman look at that money bass is the content creator he is a competitive fisherman yes. he says i like how aisha thinks open fire and skillet type of country girl. that's what i'm talking about money bass <laughs> We gonna get along just fine. Oh my about. goodness, y'all! They are laughing. Ooh, they eat chitterlings. I have never had chitlins in my life. You will, cause I'm gonna make you some, Maggie. Oh my gosh, y'all! I was afraid she was gonna say that. I see raccoon and chitlins and pig parts in my future. <laughs> okay, Deborah says, "What about vinegar?" I might have missed a question. I don't know if I um. Oh my gosh, y'all. I'm sorry. Thank you. I'm just scrolling for questions, y'all. If you have a question, please put a Q in front. If I missed it, please drop it down. We took a turn on horseback lane. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Yeah, we're gonna say it is live. That's all I'm gonna say. Oh my god. It. It's 2023. We're gonna see. I just uh, feel like it's gonna come full circle. And yes. they're gonna say, Aisha was talking about eating horse. Oh now my that's god. all you can find at the store. Oh horse goodness. and chitterlings and pig feet. Oh my goodness. Well, that's it. I ain't going to speak that, y'all. I know oh. some of y'all like, Lord, no, Jesus, please. I uh, know, right? <laughs> so, Linda has making a comment, but we can talk about because uh, we've got 10 minutes left, y'all. So, if you have a question, add it in here. But we'll definitely do this again. This was so much fun. Christina yeah. is saying, I haven't mastered how to cook rice yet. She was talking about rice in the uh, chat. And um, sorry, Christina says she uses a rice cooker. I use a rice cooker as well. Any tips on cooking rice, Aisha? Yep, it's real easy. Now, this is what you do. It's one cup of rice, okay, to one and a half cup of liquid. Thank me later. Okay. and you Especially, your... and this is better with jasmine. I eat, I eat jasmine rice. I love jasmine rice. There's a certain particular brand. I could post it for you all. It comes in a yellow bag. I can't think of the, the brand or the name of it right now, but I get it at a Walmart. Um mm. I think I can find it at Publix, but I've tried so many different rices, you know, cooking all these years, you do, you just try different right. things, but mm -hmm. that rice right there for me is perfect for everything that I cook. Um, it's sticky yet. Mm -hmm. It is, um, but it's, uh, it's not 
mushy. Does that make sense? Yes. So yes. See, but it still got that texture. It's so good. I made it for the people on Sunday, y'all. It's real, real good. Um, it comes out perfect. So just try that with whatever brand you have. Do one and a half. Don't follow the instructions because they're telling you wrong. You don't uh, need no two cups of water. Just if you look at the back of your rice, a lot of them tell you one cup of rice to every two cups of water. No. That's what I do. Okay. No. Mm -mm. Now your rice cooker, that maybe they work for you, but try the one and a half cup. Then you'll get that more firmer texture and it's done. It's not grainy. Mm -hmm. And you know, you don't, you ain't got to worry about it being mushy. Oh, that is awesome. Or overcooked or any of that. It's just, per it's, it's perfect. Not al dente, yes. but right past that mark of our dinner. Absolutely. You can fluff it with a fork. I love yeah, oh, good girl. rice. Absolutely. About. All right. Let's see. Um, we're still talking about ho horses, y'all. I'm I'm behind in the <laughs> chat, but I'm coming. Someone <laughs> says you could probably make some hoof bone marrow from that horse. I know people do. I know drink. that's right. <laughs> Listen. <laughs> no, we can go on not. and on and on about oh, this horse. Tracy says they sell elk where I live in restaurants. Tracy, I think you said you're in Arizona, but I remember you all traveling to, taking the boys to like Pigeon Forge, Tennessee and driving through the North Georgia mountains. I saw a moose for the first time in real life. And that thing was as big as my car. I came out of a tunnel bridge and I saw eyes and I'm in, a, uh, in an SUV and I saw eyes looking back at me at the same height. I'm sitting in my vehicle. That was mm -hmm. the biggest thing I've seen in my life. But Bisons are big. Oh, yeah. And have you ever played the Oregon Trail? Girl, you know, we old up like that. I used to play the Oregon Trail. It was by I have no idea. Oh, wow. I have no idea. No, I haven't. Oh, my goodness. Oh, someone made a comment about buffalo fish. Since I've never heard of it, can you um, describe it? What is it close to? Is it a white fish? Is it a fishy fish? Is it? It's fatty, oh. number one. Okay. Um, It's not a fish that I can related to um i used to eat it when i lived in st louis i can't find it anywhere down south i've looked trust me because it's so good the only mm -hmm. thing about buffalo fish if you live up north like i lived in st louis missouri if you live anywhere in that area check deerberg's uh or schnooks um i'm trying to think i don't think they will probably have it anywhere else maybe at uh schwab's or somewhere like that um but look but just look for it because sometimes uh it's there and you just don't know to look for it or to ask for it. But it has a ton of bones. When I tell you a million bones, a million bones. Mm. Every bite has a bone. So mm. that's the bad part. So you're paying the price. But when I tell y'all that fish is so good. Wow. A little more on the fattier side. On like one part of it has kind of like it's kind of fatty. But on the other side, it's really nice and meaty. Um, mm. And it's, it's worth it. It's so good. It's expensive too. So um, but the next time you go to your stores, those that live up in the north or the northwest, uh, the Midwest, I'm sorry, Midwest area, uh, I don't know where else they would have it. So you would just have to look. So Awesome. That sounds incredible. Now, I will. I'll try pretty much, you know, any uh, fish. That sounds really good. We have a question. I don't know if you know this or if anybody knows. Are buffalo and bison the same thing? I don't think so. I think bison is like the cow. I don't know. Are they all bovine? Does I don't think they're the same thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Tanya says, Miss Maggie, where are you from? So um, <laughs> right now I'm <laughs> dialing in from London, England. So it is, what time is it here, y'all? I came for a collab. It is 1025, 1025 p.m. So we got five minutes and we will wrap it up. This has been so much fun. <laughs> I live in the Atlanta area. So I grew up in the South. I grew up in Athens, Georgia. Um, my parents went to school at Georgia. And I was born in Ghana in West Africa. So I am the daughter of African immigrants. We came to America when I was one. So that's uh, my story. My mom is a retired home science teacher. We did have a question about um, vegetables. Okay, so Luke Kaisley is asking, does Miss Aisha have her own vegetable garden? Not yet. Okay. Yes. And Victoria is saying, make sure you wash the rice. I didn't know about that. I don't wash my rice and I'm not going to, <laughs> but thank you. <laughs> no, I mean, I've, no, I've had people say that they, they, you know, make, you know, they wash their rice, but I, 30 years cooking, I'm good. I, I, you know, it's, it's just like, I know people that don't wash their chicken and mm -hmm. they don't get sick. So I, right. it's just, I just do what I do. Yeah, Crystal says she knows about that yellow bag of jasmine rice. Is it mm -hmm, the Mahat Crystal. Mahatma brand? Is uh -uh, that the one? No, oh, it's um, gosh, okay. I can't think of the name of it because it's not a normal name. It's like a, 
it's a it's another type of brand, but it's yellow and it's the only yellow one there. So, you know, when you go to Walmart, it's a yellow bag. It says Jasmine Rice. OK, we'll have to look it up, you all. Um, they don't have Walmart where I am here, but I will look it up online. Money Bass has another question. Can we do a catch and cook with squirrel, raccoon or fish? I am going to just say I asked <laughs> Money Bass for a catch and cook a while ago. But what I learned is that for the type of competitive fisherman that he is, they catch it, they weigh it. And then they put it back so that the other fishermen can come through and catch it. I guess they're trying to get a score based on the biggest fish. I thought you catch it and take it home. That's why I, like, I ain't throwing my back. <laughs> so, I mean, I can I catch it and weigh it and take it home, but I'm not going. <laughs> I'm not mm. going to catch it and throw it back. <laughs> oh my goodness! Yes, I love yes. fish too much for that. I know. I know. Yes, this has been fun. I had so much fun. What did you think about this Q&A? Ask us anything, Miss Aisha. Oh, it was fun. It was fun. I um, okay. I saw, wait a minute, Linda says Sam's Club sells it too. They, okay. not, Sam's Club does not sell the particular brand I'm referring to. Now, they do have a yellow bag of jasmine rice, and I know because I bought some to cook for the church, um, mm. but it's not the brand. Thank you, Rodney. Golden, Golden star. star. Okay, That's it. now so we know. you all check out that rice. It is so good. So um, good. And like I said, that's that's my rice. They need to just put yeah. my face on it. <laughs> I'm sorry, y'all. They should. They should put uh, my face on it. I eat it so yeah. much. <laughs> Yes, yes. A good fluffy rice. Oh, rice, so many good things you can do with it. All right, everyone. I finally made it to the bottom of the list. This was so much fun. You all know, and I am so, so grateful. Miss Aisha does not have to share her platform with me, but we are with you all every Wednesday or almost every Wednesday. But as long as she keeps asking me to come back, I am back. If I'm in the kitchen, we will do a cooking collab for Wednesdays with Aisha and Maggie. If we're not in the kitchen, we will still Still come up with some content for you all. This was so much fun. If I missed your question, we will do this again the next time uh, we do a Q&A. Um, so yes, 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 yes. Thank you all so much for being here. Any um, updates or any cooking class updates, anything new going on in your space you want to shout out before we close, Miss Aisha? Nope. For my subscribers, uh, our next cooking live will be on next week. And Friday, we're cooking fish on my uh, regular cooking page. So you all are welcome to join me for that. Um, and then Maggie, we'll just we'll post whatever we're cooking on next Wednesday for you guys. Um, and that's pretty much it. I, I be all over the place a little bit, but that's, that's where you can find me. Well, we would not have you any other way. And I'll connect with you offline about next Wednesday. So, yes, okay. you all, you can cook with uh, Miss Aisha uh, Friday. It's open to everyone. So, please, she is on Facebook, YouTube, and, you know, TikTok and Instagram. 6 p.m. The, yes, it'll be 6 p.m. Central, your time? Mm-hmm. Okay, so you all can get your ingredients and cook along. I will miss it. I'll still be in London, but as soon as I'm back in the kitchen, you will see um, us cooking along together. So my channel is Maggie the Substitute Teacher. I teach uh, my food substitutions using using sugar-free, dairy-free, and gluten-free ingredients. However, if you can have all the full flavor stuff, you can still make everything. I just do the substitute version. I'm on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter. And I usually stream every day if I'm not cooking. I do like a dining documentary. So if you all want to see what I'm eating and the different things that I'm doing while I'm in London, I am giving you content every day. All right, everyone. Well, thank you so much, Miss Aisha. This was so much fun. If we missed your question, we'll get it on the next Q&A. We'll go ahead and sign off, everyone. Thank you so One much. One question, for Maggie. Yes, ma'am. When do you go home? I am flying home Saturday morning. So okay. I'll be home Saturday, but I found out I have a work trip next week, Wednesday. So oh, I'll be no. in Philadelphia. So I'll be available, you know, okay. at my computer, okay. but I won't be in the kitchen. So we'll connect okay. off the That's line. okay. We All will right, figure we'll talk about it. that. Okay. Yes, ma'am. I just want to know how long. <laughs> I know. I know. This is a heavy travel month for me, but I'll be back in the kitchen soon. All right, everybody. Thank you so much. Bye.